Thank you, Jen, for not doing like him. Hey, that was loud. Hey, how are you? Come on in, come on in. How are you? Hi. Say hi. She was nice enough to have us here today. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Jen is get, uh, Jen is uh, competing next weekend in Tampa. Yeah. So, the Tampa Pro. Yeah. So hopefully she wins, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a big one next weekend. Like a lot of people will go that one. A lot of pros. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, good. good. Cool. What are we training today, Jen? Do you want to know? Glutes? <laughs> That's what he guessed. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming. All right. I did my Mac 6. We are in Las Vegas, the lift factory, with my good buddy Mark and his pretty wife to be, <laughs> Jennifer Dory. Jen, welcome back in the U.S. We're so glad to have you, right? So happy to have you. <laughs> it's, it's been a while since uh, since you were here. It's been a while since you we were we had you on the JT, JTV. I think last time we shot it was a Gold's Gym in Venice, yeah. and that video rocked. People loved it. Yeah. So Jason, we have to have her back. Jen's competing at the Tampa. You need to film her, and that's what we are. That's what we did today. So we are one week out exactly from the Tampa Pro. Great show. Have you done the Tampa Pro before? Uh, yeah, 2018. Okay, how was that for you? actually where we met yeah. oh man okay I didn't know that <laughs> yeah two years ago so wow so we're one week out and uh, you're going back hopefully to win the title this time and then uh, qualify would that qualify for the Olympia if you know? okay that's awesome so I want to talk a little bit because it's been a long time since we spoke and so much has happened since last time uh, we spoke um, obviously the whole quarantine and you were in Canada so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see your take on it from a different country because we know of course what happened how we dealt with it here in the states but I'm sure being from Canada it must have been a little bit different so tell me a little bit about how um, how that changed um, your life because not only you were prepping for the show uh, you've been prepping but you go to school you have a lot going on in your life you know so tell me how the quarantine actually affected you a little bit and how you got through it. Yeah, so I was originally going to do Toronto Pro, which would have been June 12th, and then that was canceled 10 weeks out. So that was kind of like in the middle. I flew back home, I think it was beginning of February. Yeah. Oh, so you were here right was, when this the whole thing here, started. I think there was one case of coronavirus <clears throat> in Toronto when I flew back. And I like postponed my flight because I didn't want to go into the airport with anything going on. And I flew back I think February 7th or something like that. You're trying to decide, you know, like, should she go should home? Should I stay or should I go back? But I had to go back home anyways because my time was... I had to visit our family. Stuff. Yes. So. Um, and then so I had gone back home. And then about a few weeks later, it was just like everything shut down. It was beginning of March for the Arnold. And I was supposed to be going there with Magno. Ah, everything yes. Everything shut down. They were like, I was actually supposed to fly out the next morning. And then they were like... Uh, the expo's canceled, everything's canceled. Wow. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I was still, I was actually at the gym when I found out. And then the next, I think two days later, our gym was closed, everything closed down. So it was like the past four months, I guess I'd say, I've been prepping at home, basically. Uh, <laughs> obviously, not ideal when you're prepping, but. With no gym. So, what gym do you train at? Back? Give the name of the gym that you train at back home. Just Good Life. Good Life. Good life. That's, yeah. It's a big corporate. chain, or? Okay. Yeah, they're corporate. Okay, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So the gym closes. Did you have any equipment at the house? Did you purchase something? What did you, did you start? Because yeah. a lot of people start just buying stuff like Mark, buying stuff for his own house. And yeah, what so, did you do? So I had, um, I actually had got a Stairmaster from my garage about a month prior because I just didn't want to have to go back and forth to the gym for cardio. Yeah. Thankfully I had that and I had some dumbbells, bands and stuff. And then I was like, you know what, just in case, like I want to try and get some stuff. So I ended up getting a few more bands and all that stuff. And that's like pretty much what I had for the first, I think, two months. And then I ended up contacting a friend of mine and he had um, Fitness Depot hook up there. So I had like a high, low a pulley and I got like a lap bar attachment, a rope, a nice. and like that. And that's kind of like what I had been making do with. Wow. So it was like um, a cable attachment, a couple of dumbbells, bands. So you, you work with like the bare minimum yeah. for this prep. 
Was that was that a challenge? And when you when you used to train a commercial gym and you have everything you possibly want, how does that affect your 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 mental state? Like prepping, I mean, the, the Tampa Pro and even the New York and what, all these shows that are big shows. So was that hard mentally for you to deal with that, or were you like, that's okay, I'm just gonna get through it, or how how was your mental? I was kind of like, there wasn't really much that I could do, so I was like, you know what, things happen, like I just gotta roll with the punches. And I thought it would have been like a very temporary situation. I was like, you know what, it'll only be a few weeks, the gym's gonna open up. We all thought. Flatten the curve for two weeks, and then things will be back, it's not the end of the world, just let's just do what I can for now. And I was like, at first I'm like excited, you know, home workouts is something different, it's new, it's fun. And then that got old pretty quick, but. I have to say I'm really proud of her because like, like she just said, she just made the best of it, you know, and she was optimistic, like, yeah, this might be fun, you know, um, she just worked. Silver with, lining. Yeah. But it was like, I mean, really, what could we do at that point? I know. Stuff was close, so yeah. I was like, either I can like sit here and like cry Pout. about it or yeah. I can just yeah. do the best I can with what I have. She just got down to business and she got it done. She got the job done. Yeah. Wow. When you're, yeah. when you're at that point in prep, I mean, a lot of fat loss is diet. Yeah. So... That kind of was my main focus, like being on top of diet and cardio, training, just doing whatever I could pretty much. And then um, now that I've been here for three weeks with a gym, like the progress is just insane. So basically up to three weeks ago, you had no gym. When you came here, you still yeah. didn't have any gym. Wow. I hadn't been in gym for four months. So the gyms back home are not open still? Not yet. I think they're, they're opening up next week. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about um, the school. Uh, so what do you study in school again? Kinesiology. And you're almost done. I'm in my last course right now uh, in summer school. So I'm, I have one more final paper that's due two days after Tampa Pro. So I got to finish that before I leave. Um, <laughs> so that's been tough to juggle because I came back here and I originally chose um, the S2 summer term because I thought I was doing Toronto. So I was like, this way I can focus solely on my course, finish it, bang it out. And of course, I mean, that didn't happen. So now it's like my finals are right at the end of my prep, but. How do you juggle? How do you manage, you know, because you, you're you also working full time, you know, with prep and we'll talk about it in a second, but how do you manage with the diet, the training, your clients and school and him? Because yeah. he's, he, I'm sure he's distracting you all the time. <laughs> how do you manage? You're so young. Just time management, I think. Like, yeah. Even to him, I was like, you know, I have to get this done. Today is like, I had to do, it was like a, a report for a final paper. It's like, I have to watch this movie and I have to do this part of my research today. Tomorrow I have to get this done. And I just broke everything up into pieces of what I had to do. Okay. Every day when I wake up, I do a to-do list and like, I have to check certain things off. Like what's the most important that I have to get done? And then before I go to bed, I make sure those things are done. Mark, is that motivating for you to see that? Honestly, it has to be. Since she's been in my life, um, I've been a lot more uh, mindful and stru structured on you know responsibilities. Like I, I thought I was responsible, but she is very responsible, and um, it just it, it's it's a good uh, it's a good pairing. Because She's an overachiever, and I think you know people like uh, obviously like her, and, and I think Jay, they, yeah. they have to be that way because otherwise you get nothing done. Yeah, she really he, doesn't know any better. Like yeah, she, I'm a perfectionist. Like, yeah, I have to get everything done, and I don't like to like procrastinate too late she doesn't want to wait end up forgetting about it she gets to so I'd rather right just get it even like with work client stuff I just do it right away because if not then it piles up on you and then next you know you have like 200 things on your to-do list so let's talk about your clients so you were I was asking you so when you're done with your study um, what would you like to do or what what can you do with it and you're telling me you could be well that you answer that question but yeah. you may not even want to use your degree and tell me why <laughs> yeah so um i would my degree is in kinesiology so i would probably have to go back and specialize um or go for like a master's phd depending on which route i choose to go um tell him what i want you to do he wants me to be a nurse practitioner here but i'm just saying i carry yeah exactly. yeah but like the amount of time to go back to school and the money in school and then the <laughs> hours i'd be working there like right now i'm grateful i get to work from my phone and at home and you know, I'm making like the same amount of money as what I'd be making doing that. Yeah. Minus the extra school debt, minus the extra five years in school. So I was like, I mean, I'm grateful to, to right now I can work on my phone and I can make. And and you have a contract with Magnum. We can mention that too. So yeah. you're, you're a sponsor actually yeah. with Magnum. Bomb and Bombshell. Yeah. So you, you have, you know, you have good sponsors and of course that helps financially. So basically you're at the point right now where you're like, huh. I can keep going to school, spend all that money, and possibly make less than what I'm making now. Exactly, yeah. 
that's a good problem to have, yeah. right? I, I have that there, so I wanted to finish my degree because before I like, as I was just getting into competing, I was starting in, in university. Yeah. Because I was 18 when I started. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, I just want to finish it so it's done. I have that degree, and if I do choose to go back to school, I have that open. You, you have if a backup I, plan, yeah. Exactly. So let's say 10 years from now, I want to go back to school, I can. Wow. Most people don't do that, you know. Especially not in bodybuilding. Options. Wow. How old are I, you I, again? Twenty three. <laughs> yeah. What? I thought she was twenty six. No. Oh, I'm dude. I'm ninety six. She know. makes yeah. She makes us look really bad, <laughs> <Yeah>. Mark. <laughs> She's just so. I don't know. She's just not typical for that that age no. to be so uh, driven and so. Uh, she, yeah. yeah. She has a really good family. Is that why? Yeah, so do you attribute your family to your success? Yeah. Would you oh, say? Definitely. I think my family, like, when I grew up, I was really structured with school being really important. Sit down at the table after school, do your homework, you don't get up to you finished. All my projects had to be done early on time, that kind of stuff. So. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have a twin sister and an older brother. Really? Yeah, people didn't know she had a twin sister. Wow. We learn stuff every day on JTV. What's, you. what's your sister's name? Brittany. Brittany. And what's your brother's name? Joshua. Joshua. And are you the oldest? Actually, no, I'm the middle. You're the middle. Yeah. Wow. So my brother's four years older, and my twin sister. I'm two minutes. Wow. Was he a protective brother from his little sisters? So so. Was he beating you up? We didn't get along. Too long. <laughs> 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 now we Siblings do. are always fighting. <laughs> oh God. Wow. Um, all right. So, um, what would you like to do? People always say, what is your five-year plan? Where, where do you see yourself? I mean, obviously, I'm sure winning the Olympia is, in your, is in your, on your bucket list. You know? That's definitely one of my ultimate goals. Yeah. But what would you, what would you like to be in, in five years from now? Where, would like, where, where are you seeing yourself live? Do you see yourself with a family? What, what would you like to do uh, in five to ten years? Definitely living in Vegas, not in Canada. <laughs> so the goal is to I'm stay. with you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know. We're yeah. all Canadians. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Uh, definitely like five years from now, I would say settled here in Vegas. We'd have a house, have a family, hopefully have an Olympia title by then. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right, that's a good goal. I don't like to like plan too much like that because I think that like everything has its own time. I mean, you can't really like force things to yeah. happen. So as much as you can try and pre-plan the future, you kind of just have to let things Well, you, it's always good to have goals and those are like good goals to have, you know. So um, uh, what was I going to ask you? Everybody saw her place again at the Olympia last year. She placed fifth. Wow. And uh, we were obviously very happy with that. She's like the most humble person I've ever met. Like, I know. Um, That's I'm a Canadian. Happy. The Canadian. It's a Canadian, right? When you come from there, yeah. yeah. So everybody saw last year, and I feel like she feels more confident this year because she's really worked on the things that she needed to work on. And uh, her body, crazy enough that she didn't have a gym, I know. but her physique is better this year. Than it was last year. Her stage presence is better this year than it was last year. So, you know, we're she never complained about her placing last year. She was super grateful and happy to be in the presence of all these champions. And on that stage, placing fifth, I was super proud of her. Of course, she's my girlfriend, and I saw her placing higher. But um, it's good that way, you know. Yeah. Like, top five was like yeah. beyond. Did, three. did that really increase your confidence for this year? The top five. Definitely. I think yeah. it was more so like. Being top five, the one thing is like a dream in itself. It just yeah. kind of like solidified to me that like I can you be belong. up there with them. Yeah. I do belong up there. I belong. Yeah. Um, but it was more so just how I felt before I even got the top five placing. I knew going into Olympia, I was at my hundred percent. I was ready, and like that's the best feeling when you know that you're you're at hundred percent. And that's kind of how I feel again now. So I'm excited because some shows last year I felt like I was you know eighty percent, eighty five percent, and I that's didn't really good. feel hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. I was kind of doubting myself. In the yeah. Point. Whereas Olympia, I was so excited to go on stage. I can't wait to show the judges and like see their face when I step on stage. Like, I yeah, on stage, that's what I saw. So it was, it was I'm glad you talk about that because that, they can't tell right away. Yeah. Either you're confident or not, or you don't yeah. feel like at your best or not. They can just tell in your face. I think. And I just knew like I had made so many changes from Toronto to Olympia. Yeah. Um, last year that I was like I was so excited to show that off, and now I'm like the same way. I'm like I can't wait to get back on stage and like see their faces when I step on stage. Like oh shit. Well, this weekend will be a, a very, very good test. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy for you. I'm pulling for you. We are, we are pulling for you on GTV. Talk to uh, real quick. Uh, that's what I want to ask you. Talk to me real quick about your your uh, your training business. So you do you do remote 
you know, training. So you help people online and everything. You, you have a partner or you have someone you, you work with? Yeah, so my coach, James Ayo from Team Atlas, I work exclusively with them for competition prep. Nice. And we do lifestyle clients, competition prep clients, and then I also do lifestyle clients on my own as well. So how many, tell me how many clients you have. Uh, with Team Atlas, we have, I think, over 250 clients. Wow. So active, yeah. Active wow. Clients, yeah. So, so we're constantly on our phones doing stuff. Wow. And I want to give James Ayo, her coach, a shout out as well. He's based out in Montreal, Canada, yeah. and uh, he's been very attentive to her all yeah, year, awesome. all, all year long, the off season, and uh, even I took a step back from her prep because now I, I feel super confident that you know they work really well together, you know, just because you know when you're in a relationship, of course, I, you're invested. I, yeah, now I can, I mean that, uh, very invested. Now I can stand on the sidelines, be her cheerleader, and I feel like she's a little bit more, you know, comfortable now because. She doesn't have to please me and please yeah. their, their coach. So uh, shout out to James for you know the, the good work all year. Wow. Well, that's awesome. So you are a busy girl, you know, between competing and all your clients and school and everything else. It's uh, yeah, and Mark, yeah, of course. Um, but I'm really glad that you're here. We're uh, excited for your return to the stage next week. I will be in Tampa, so I'm yes. hoping that if you win. I get first dib on the interview. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, best of luck, Jen. Mark, you're going to Tampa also? Or? Here, of course yeah. you're going to be there. Okay. So seven weeks from now, we will know if Jen actually qualified for the Olympia. Best of luck to you. And then uh, we'll see you in Tampa, guys. Thanks for being on JTV.